Natalie, I'm Sure, don't hurt yourself though. Because if you hurt yourself, I gotta do paperwork, so don't hurt yourself. Just saying. Careful. Okay, right, so go ahead. Say again. Estimate about how big of a page. Um, we are gonna get into this. It's probably gonna be like a two-day thing. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna. Well, I'll let you guys know by the end of the class period what you guys need to know for your, for uh for the next day. Um, but uh, yeah, you guys are probably gonna need the next couple of days. I want to say. It's, gonna, it's not going to be like a one. It's not going to be like a one day thing. It's going to take a couple of days to get into. But what we're going to um, get into the uh, basics of this, and then we're going to build upon it. There's some stuff I'm going to give you guys like a broad spectrum of it, and then you're going to work your way back in where we fill in the gaps. But I want to give you guys more of a broad spectrum. That way, when I tie the smaller things that are inside it <laughs> back in. Everything will make sense. So the seven different subcubes are we're gonna need that for this. Not for this one. It's a different one. Okay, they're all connected uh, using polynomials, but this polynomial functions is where you're going to see how they act on a graph themselves. We're actually graphing how you work them out. Okay, and it's also stuff that you're gonna see as you get into uh, calculus and all that. Okay, so. First things first, does everybody remember back when we were no. learning about parabola, parabolas yes. and, quad, and using the quadratic functions and all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, can can you, what can you tell me about parabolas? Anybody? Right. It's uh, like an exponential function when there's a, or maybe it's quadratic. It's something where there's, um, when you multiply it, it's going to be it's going to be in the uh, top two quadrants, the uh, negative positive and positive positive quadrants. Or I guess it doesn't have to be. I'm just thinking in the traditional one. If it's like x squared, mm -hmm. it's going to be. Okay. So if it's x squared, what type of is that? A negative or a positive coefficient? Positive one. one. Okay. So what's the difference between the way a parabola looks if it is a negative coefficient versus a positive coefficient? All right, if it's negative, it's a surrounding It's going to open up which way? Down. It's gonna open down if it's negative, and if it's positive, it's gonna open going up. Okay, what are the other things that you know about parabolas? Is it linear? Huh? Is it not linear, or is it linear? No. Is that a part of this thing? No. No, no, I appreciate the answer. Come on. I'm asking, I'm asking for stuff that you know. <coughs> Andrew, what you got? Like, uh, what was it? I think it was something like a trinomial. I think it has to be made up of a trinomial or something. I don't know. Yeah, most, um, so most, most probabilists come in a uh, standard form or the trinomial where it's like x squared and then they, everything runs in descending order. Yes. Okay, but you'll usually see something like something x squared and then x and then plus this, which is kind of in the same form, y equals mx plus b sort of form, okay? But um, in relation to polynomial functions, okay, parabolas uh, kind of, the parabolas kind of act the same way when we're doing polynomial functions, okay? Um, Okay, a few, uh, a few terms that you guys need to be familiar with when we're dealing with uh, polynomial functions would be the degree of a function, okay? So we remember when we first got into polynomials, uh, identifying the different parts of the polynomial, what is the degree of a uh, term? What does, what does the degree of a term refer to? The the exponent, okay? So whatever the um, coefficient or the variable is raised to refers to the degree of that function, okay? Um, perfect example. Also, if we had a full polynomial up here where we had x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared plus x minus eight, okay? What would be the highest degree of this function? One. Why one? Because it doesn't have to go. And it's not x because x doesn't go into eight. And one goes to seven. Oh, wait. 
Okay, so it's not a included in the equation. There's one included in the equation. Negative that minus x? No, minus a. Okay, let's say we set it to zero. Negative x minus a. What is the highest degree of this uh, polynomial? Negative three. What is the highest degree of this polynomial? Four. Okay, four. Okay, four degrees of this polynomial going down. Okay. This is referred to as a fourth degree function, but most commonly the one that you'll see is something that looks like this one right here. I'm just showing this, I'm just putting all these uh, other ones up here as an example. But the most common one you're gonna see is x squared, which would mean what is the highest degree of this function? One. Two. Two, okay? You go with the highest degree or the highest exponent, okay? Oh, no, looking back, look back at the highest degree of the function here, okay? This was referred to as a second degree function. Now, if I had something that had this here, what would you call that? A third degree function, okay? Okay, another thing that we are going to get into that you guys are going to need to know is a term called in behavior, okay? Write this down. <clears throat> Again, we're gonna be, this is like gonna be a two-part thing, so I don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed, okay? This is gonna be a two-part thing, so just go with it, okay? So the end behavior is refers to the degree and the leading coefficient of a polynomial function. Okay, sorry, said that wrong. The degree and leading coefficient of a polynomial function determine the end behavior of a graph. Okay. The end behavior, the end behavior is the degree, the degree and the leading coefficient, I wrote that backwards, the degree and the leading coefficient of a polynomial function determines the end behavior of a graph, okay? What that tells us is when you have, so say you have a graph that looks something like this. Okay. So your f of x is x squared. <laughs> Okay, you guys have all seen parabolas that look like that, correct? Because you know when y equals also, quick note, f of x is the same as saying y equals. Okay, so you'll hear me say f of x a lot more than you'll hear me say y equals, but they literally mean the exact same thing, okay? But of course, when we're teaching this, they want us to refer back to f of x most likely because when you guys see this on an exam or something, like a state administrative exam, you're gonna see f of x, not y equals, okay? But they both literally mean exactly the same thing. Okay, so notice what this parabola is doing on the graph. What we're going to do is write down what is referred to as the end behavior based off of what we see this parabola doing on the graph, okay? 
And again, this is gonna be, this is gonna seem like a lot, but do not get overwhelmed, okay? When you are writing the end behavior of a polynomial function that is presented on the graph like this, okay? We write as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches dot, dot, dot. This is the format that you actually end up writing uh, how the graph or how the parabola is behaving on the graph. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches Okay, this first part as is basically you're reading this from left to right as if it was a sentence as x and we're focusing on, I should have said this, we're focusing on right now the right side of the graph. When you're writing these, it will be based on which side of the graph you're talking about. So as X approaches, this arrow means approaches. Somebody help me spell this because I suck at spelling. A P P R A H. I get it? Okay, cool. Okay. As X approaches infinity, meaning right here is approaching, X is approaching infinity, okay? F of X, Y is the X axis, is the Y axis, is approaching what? So if we're going this way, so we know on a parabola, this arrow means that it is going towards infinity, right? It's not I'm gonna stop, right? Yes? Okay, so. X is approaching infinity. What is happening to Y at the same time? What is Y approaching? Also infinity. Also infinity. How do you know that? Because it's gonna go infinitely to the right and infinitely up. It's gonna infinitely go to the right and it's also infinitely going up, okay? But is it going positive infinity or negative infinity? Positive. Why? because it's going up, not down. Yep, it's going up, not down. Okay. Yep. So, this is what's taking place on the right side of the graph. Now, Bryce, since you caught that, okay, you see the format here. Well, how do you think, and just tell me what you think just from this, based on what's happening on the left side of the graph, how would you write that out? What's going on on the left? Oh, uh, you write left. Then, as x approaches negative infinity, why is it negative infinity? Because it's going infinitely left now. It's going infinity, infinity right. left, and we know the left side of the graph of the x axis goes where. And it's in a relation to the number line, which way does uh, as negative go? It goes to the left. Goes to the left. Okay. And then f of x, or mm -hmm. y, approaches negative, or negative. We know it also approaches infinity. Yeah. It goes where? It goes infinity, yep. Yeah. It goes to infinity, positive or negative? Oh, positive. Positive, okay. This one is also going to positive infinity. Okay. Now, right side reads, as x approaches infinity, positive infinity, f of x, or the y value, approaches positive infinity as well. It's both on the right side, which we know quadrant one, anything, any point that lands in quadrant one is going to be positive for either the x value or the y value. We know that, right? Yes? Okay, so we know it's fair to say that both of these are gonna be positive, okay? Now, in association with the left side, we know that anything that goes on the left side, the x value is always going to be negative because it's on the left side of the number axis, which we can say the origin, we know the origin is 0, 0, or just 0 in general, okay, is approaching, as x approaches negative infinity, 
f of x or y is approaching positive infinity as well because it's still going up the number line or up the y-axis, which moves in a positive way. Does that make sense? Yeah. A little bit? Again, don't get overwhelmed. This is going to be a two-part thing. Go ahead, Tori. Um, I was just going to say, so in this situation, like, the only thing that really changes is, like, um, the first, like, the x, like, where the x goes with, like, parabolas, because the, the y for the right and the left side, is both, they're both going to go up. Okay, they're both going up for a specific reason. I'm glad you said that because that's what we're going to lead into next, okay? So, where Tori is going with this? Anybody have any questions about this part? Yes, no? I see blank stares. And I see people just staring off. What's on your mind? He does, he does those things sometimes. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. So, one thing I want, another thing I want you guys to note is what's taking place here and here. Okay. What would my x be considered, Andrew? In relation to the term, what is x? No, 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 no. Right there. So, we see f of x equals x squared. What is the x? in this uh, term? Squared. Nope. Second Tor degree. The coefficient. The coefficient, okay. It's a positive or a negative? Positive. Positive, okay. Now, what about my exponent? What does that refer to? Squared. It's squared, but what else will we call it? Uh, it is a degree. Second degree. Second degree. It is a degree, okay. Now, this is what is considered an even function. Why is it even? Because my degree is an even number. Yes? My degree is an even number, okay? My coefficient, however, what do you think my, what is my, what do we know about parabolas that the coefficient will, will uh, determine? Positive or negative. Right, but what else? What does it tell? What does it tell oh, us? About? The, uh, okay. the width, the if it's narrow or wide, or uh -huh. how, how fast it exponentially. No, no, no. If it's gonna open up, up yeah. or down. No, you were doing this. I don't I know. said positive or negative. It's like a whale. I don't know. You that said was. that was wrong, though. So then I'm <laughs> I was trying to figure out what you were interpreting. <laughs> okay. So the, whether our uh, coefficient is a positive or negative will determine if it's going to open up, up or down. Okay, whether our degree is even or odd is going to tell us what? Well, you're looking to tell me. What's on your mind? Because how else am I supposed to hear what you're saying if I don't look at you? What do you think an even function, so if this is considered an even function, what do you think is going to happen? Like an odd function? Or no, what, yeah, what do you think is going to happen between an even function versus an odd function? Also a positive, also a positive coefficient and a negative one. Okay, we know a negative coefficient is going to open our parabola up down. It's going to end with a down. And we also know a positive is going to end with an up. What do you think is going to be the difference between an even one? What do you see in this graph here? Is it, is it like, does normal mean it would multiply by itself once, but then it'd have to multiply by itself another two times? It would be three times. Or, yeah, three times yep. if, if it was, uh, if it was three. Okay. So, whether it is an even function or an odd function will determine how the um, infinities, how the left and the right side open up or open down, okay? If it is an even one, the start and the finish are going to open the exact same way. They're going to end the exact same way. So if it starts opening up like this, if it's an even function, they're always going to go the same way, meaning it's not going to matter if this was negative and it 
did it the other way, but it was still an even degree function, they would still finish the exact same way. But because it's an odd coefficient, you know it opens down. Does that make sense? Both of them. Stay with it. It's okay. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a couple of quick examples and I want you to look at them and tell me how you think it will, how the, if it is an even function versus an odd function based off of the way the parabolas open up or open down and how they finish. Oh, is that a W? Hmm, kind of. You want us to write the end behavior? No, no, no. Don't tell me the end behavior. Tell me if you think it is an even function or an odd function. What do you mean when you say even? Is it even if it's supposed to be symmetrical? No, no, no. Not that far. So if it's an even function, it determines something else. So remember on the last one we saw that it was x squared, where the degree was an even number. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I, I must have been talking about it. Oh, you, oh. Were, you were talking at that point, I remember. Bryce, what do you think? Just tell me what you think. I, I actually don't know yet. Okay, that? With the and shape one be odd. Which one are you talking about? That one. This one? Yeah. Okay. That would be odd and this one would be even because of like where the arrows end. Exactly. Okay. Um, you got it? The same. Yeah, I got okay. it. Okay. An even function is going to have endpoints that start and finish in the same direction. Meaning these are both going up. So you know automatically that the degree that it's raised to whether it's x to the second, the fourth, the sixth, the eighth, any even number, they are going to start and finish in the same direction, okay? Now, this one, okay? They're starting and ending in different directions. So what type of function is this one? Odd function. Okay, this one can be odd, to the third, the fifth, could be x is uh, just x itself, or seven, nine, so on, so on, an odd number, okay? It's going to open up and finish in different directions, okay? Looking at these two graphs, who can tell me what the end behavior is going to look like? I can try. Let's, let's get it. So for the one, yeah, that one, okay. um, it's even. And do you have, you write it for either side, right and left side? So I usually start with uh, what's going, most of the time they start with what's going on on the right and then they work to the left, but Okay. Yeah, I can go. start with I can start with right side. Okay. So for right side, as x approaches infinity, um, y or f of x approaches infinity as well, except there is a dip, right? But the end the end behavior, the very end, is, mm -hmm. is what? Infinity. Infinity. Okay. Now. That's a great. That's the. How do you guys make fun of me? <laughs> I can't do some things. <laughs> okay, now let's look at the let's look at the uh, left. Bryce, what's the left? Uh, the left. Mm-hmm. 
as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches infinity. f of x approaches infinity. Did you just Yes. Sure. I didn't want to wrap it. Oh, go ahead. Nice to me. They're great. Thank you. You'll be nice to me. I also miss you. You got it? I don't think so either. You got it? Good job. It's a lot of makeup from yesterday. I feel good about it. Thank you. I think we're taking a step in the right direction. Okay. Cat. Cat, can you give me the can you give me the uh can you give me the in behavior for that graph? Start with what's going on on the right first. You got it. Okay, as and then lose the trick. X approaches infinity. As X approaches infinity. Uh, F of X also approaches infinity. F of X approaches infinity. Okay, now tell me the right. I mean, tell me the left. For the left, it would be as X approaches negative infinity. As X approaches negative infinity. F of X also approaches F of X also approaches negative infinity. Okay. Do we know why both of these end up being negative infinity? Because it's going down and to the left. Okay, because it's going down the y axis, which goes negative, and it's going left. X is going negative as well. So both of these on the left side are going to be negative infinity, negative infinity. Yes? Did you say that they would be the opposites, like the, the right and the left side would be the opposites once we find out that like the uh, degree is odd? Like they would be odd? Yeah, like once Like the degree of the function would be odd? Yeah, once you yes. determine that, then you know that they're going to be opposites? Yes, that is easier for you to tell just from looking. If you know right off the bat, those two things that if it's an even function, the way they're going to be facing is going to be the same. Based on the way they're facing, the way the arrows are facing. It doesn't matter if they're both facing down or they're both facing up. You know that it's an even, it's an even degree function. Okay. And then you also know that based off of where it's starting and finishing, if it's going to be odd or even. Okay. Now, since both of these, now. Because one of these that starts on the left is facing down, but this one's finishing up, is this coefficient on this one negative or positive? You got a 50-50 chance, so. <laughs> huh? Okay, why do you say negative? Okay, only one side of it's down. But one example that the, it's actually it's it's so it's got to be a positive coefficient and the reason is because it's finishing going up and the way i've heard and the way the way i've heard some people teach it is they treat it like they treat it like as if you're um looking at like a chart or like like the stock market chart think of the stock market chart anytime a stock market chart is going wherever it always starts down, okay? So say this is a stock market, the stock market chart, okay? It's all, something always has to start somewhere down, right? But it's still considered positive if where it finishes trends up. So this is still going to have a positive coefficient, but you know that it is going to be an odd degree function because they're opening and ending at different areas. So this one, you also know this one's going to be both positive and it's going to be um, it's going to be a positive coefficient and it's going to be an even one because they're still both facing the same way. Okay, so just base once you know those basic kind of once you know those basic rules. And again, we're going to get some more stuff up here. I just wanted to give you guys an introduction today. That way, when I tie everything in, it makes more sense. But once you know those basic parts, just from looking at the graph, you'll be able to tell if the degree of function, if the degree is even or odd, uh, is it even or odd uh, uh, degree, or you'll know if the coefficient is positive or negative. Okay, yes? How do you know that 
do you know what degree it is? You won't know what degree exactly until you get the polynomial in front of you, but that's the part we're going to lead into that. This, I just wanted to show you guys the graphs. That way you're able to read it right off the bat and you can know what it would be just when you do get the uh, formula in front of you. I mean, the part, not the part of the polynomial in front of you. Yes, Tom? So for like the writing, so does that just, just end up like right about like? Yes, you'll end up writing it just like this. This is, just like in algebra, you get a lot of formulas on how you read something out. This is how you would end up writing out what's taking place on the graph. Okay. So on the right side, we know the end behavior, which is where those arrows are pointing. As x approaches infinity, f of x is approaching infinity as well. That's what's taking place on the right side. On the left side, as x approaches negative infinity, because we know x values on the left are negative, okay? then f of x, or y, is approaching positive infinity because it's going up. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious if we were going to write it out like that. So. Yeah, we would end up writing it out like that. If I asked, if I put this in front of you and I asked you, hey, give me the end behavior of this graph, that's how you would write it out. As this is doing this, this is doing this. Let's on another hand. You guys look all sad and mad. What's wrong? We don't want to be here. <laughs> He doesn't mean that he enjoys this class very much, don't you, buddy? Do you think we enjoy being in Algebra 2 on a sunny Wednesday afternoon? It is afternoon? not that sunny. It's it's I don't know why you would do that. Because it hurts. And then I actually just went off and I didn't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm going to put I'm gonna put a couple more examples up. I want you guys Kyle has a question. Yes, Kyle. No, I was waving at the camera. Just point Don't wave at the camera. Just act natural. This is like the office, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. Huh? That is actually a really good reference. I can't even be mad. Uh, I never watched that episode. Is it a good reference for that? Okay, I'm going to give you guys just a couple examples to tie it in, and then we'll wrap this up. I also up there okay but from this graph and what we just went over tell me the in what the in behavior notation would be if you had to write it out and tell me if the degree function is positive and tell me if the leading coefficient is positive or negative I mean not positive if the degree is even or odd and then tell me if the leading coefficient is negative or positive you, you just made upside down graph the last one you just did did I yeah, yeah you, sure? just, you turn the W into an M, and then you turn Are you the sure? into an upside down. So you'll get it 100% right? Mm -hmm. Probably. Okay, let's see. Go ahead. Make it happen. Okay, Kyle, what's your question? Sarah, you're not writing. What if she is a superhuman calculator? Perfect. I'm going to call on you. I want you to regurgitate everything you're saying. Are we doing both of them? That's what I said. And use the other trash can. Just tell my trash can what your input is. Don't they get replaced every day? Not every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take it out. Kyle, mm -hmm. ah, I'm surprised you didn't look at the fun fact. What? Yes, that's here. What was that? Is that a little bit faster? What do you, can you say what you want us to write? Ferrari. Huh? Like can you say what you want us to put one more time? Write out what you believe the end notation, I mean, the, the, sorry, the end behavior of okay. both graphs would be. Tell me if it is a positive um, 
them if there's a positive or negative coefficient and tell me if the degree is even or odd based off of what is happening on the graph. Do you is that like an one? antique car or is it like a new one? No, it's a new one. Bugatti. No, a Bugatti is actually the second most expensive and it's like 20 million. Is it, uh, That's why I thought I saw it somewhere. I believe it was like a Rolls Royce something. I gotta look. It was something like Rolls Royce, but it's ridiculous. You know, I don't care how rich I am, there's just some stuff I would not spend that? that much money on. Money doesn't equal taste. It, it really doesn't. <laughs> money equals I saw it was Arizona. Arizona. Money doesn't buy happiness, yeah, does. money buys you security. Yeah. Money does buy happiness. Family. Family. Yeah. If I right now was in. Oh, don't worry. It's house literally, house it's house like act natural, whatever. I think a lot of people. I'm being, I'm being uh, evaluated on my teaching versus like what actually happens. I think a lot of people. So, like, if a fight broke out, hopefully it doesn't. I just want to know. I think a lot of people are scared to go to school because they're like, what if I get out and I don't have any money? Right. Or I don't have any money. Yeah. 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 The end behavior is what's happening on both sides. Oh, Mr. So I only have to write like the right and left. I don't have to like make it into something new. No, no, no. You're telling me at as x approaches blah blah blah, then f of x, and f of x f of x approaches blah blah blah. So yeah. And then, tell, like, and then tell me if you based off of what you see if it is even or odd. But one for the left and one for the right. Yeah. But actually, based on what you say, I'll be able to determine if you're talking about the left or the right side. If you write it correctly, I'll be able to tell which side you're talking about. Technically, would you be able to uh, you combine them? Like, and just say, okay, how do I do that? Is the I think I'm higher focused. Don't get ahead. Okay, Sarah, tell me the first one, please. Human calculator. Can she phone a friend? No. Um, <laughs> do I have to say it like as X approaches? Yep, yeah. tell me, tell me. Okay, as X approaches. As X approaches what? Negative infinity? No, not negative infinity. Which one are you doing? Yes. This one? I don't know. Yes. Are, Wait. You telling, are you doing the right side? I'm on the right side. Okay, let's go. That's, that's infinity, right? I don't know, is it? I think. Yes. Yeah, it is. As x approaches infinity, uh -huh. okay, f what is f of x doing? f of x approaches, oh, I didn't work it. Oh. Okay, why is it negative infinity, though? Because the, if you look at the y-axis, the arrow is going Nice. Okay, now tell me about the left side. Left side as no, X approaches. Also, negative. Really? Are you sure? Wait. I think there's a lot of different. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. We got one more question. I'll go, I'll go. Let's go, what is it? Okay, um, on the right side, as X approaches infinity, what is the negative of X approaches negative infinity? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. And on the left side, as X approaches infinity, what is the negative of X approaches negative infinity? Negative infinity. 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 Negative infinity.
Thank you. Thank you. Come again and again and again.